Hey, Dan, it's time for Behind, Behind the, the Buffer. Buffer. And today I have Mr. Tony Havens from Edgewood, Kentucky. Tony's fine touch detailing. Tony, how are you doing, sir? I'm great. I'm great. It's uh, weird to sit down, but uh, but this is great. I'm excited to be with you guys. Yeah, so uh, it's weird to sit down because you're usually standing over a car, I take it, right? Yeah, yeah, or, uh, you know, kneeling in and scrubbing carpets, all the good stuff that we love. Yeah. So, so this is Behind the Buffer, and it's really a segment that's just about you and your business, and... Um, so we're just going to focus on you. And I like to start these out with asking, have you been in detailing your whole life? Or or did you go to school for something else? Or did you used to work in another field? What got you into this detailing industry? Well, I'd say when I started college, I, was, I guess I thought I had to go to college because it was the right thing to do. Um, I, you know, I was a farm kid. Um, and I always liked exercising, liked working out, liked running, all that good stuff. And so I went to, um, college for that, uh, at, uh, and Northern Kentucky university, not too far from here. You say for farming? Um, no, I was a farm kid. Like I kind of grew up on a farm. Okay. So I, I had a passion for exercise and fitness and wellness. Oh, because you were so out there lifting up those hay bales. Is that how it all started? <laughs> a little bit. And I, I used um, going to the gym to kind of get away from that. <laughs> His dad always had things for me to do. So so I got into the, got into the, the exercise um, field. Um, and and our, our family had a carpet cleaning company. So... Cleaning was kind try of to, always Try to life. watch that light. When that light like really smashes your face, it just whites you out completely. Yeah, so stay right about there. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. There we go. Okay. Is Jump back in. Yeah. Cool. All right, cool. So, yeah, they had a carpet cleaning company, and I grew up doing that, you know, riding in the van, cleaning people's carpets. And um, so I was into fitness and exercise and uh dad got um an old amc amx um show car and we dabbled with that uh didn't really need anything but we thought it needed correcting and things like that so with the old turtle wax and things we uh you know we polished chrome and i kind of i really got into it i i enjoyed it um liked being outside obviously so um one thing that really stuck out was I, I told my dad, I was like, you know, the, you do the carpet cleaning thing. I'd like to, I'd like to detail cars maybe. And he said, well, you're in college. You, you can't do that. I'm paying for your college. And, you know, they never make it anyway. Detailers, they're a dime a dozen. They'll never make it. So I always kept it in the back of my head, did all my schooling um, and got my graduate degree in wellness as well, fitness. So then I, Got a job at a nice uh, country club down the road here. That's why I live in Edgewood, Kentucky. There's a nice club down the road, and I started training there as a trainer, personal trainer. And back in 08, um, things kind of, everyone remembers the 08 kind of stock market deal. So, I, you know, I would train these people, and they had money to spend. So they had a little income. And little by little, I would talk to the talk to the people about you know their cars. You know, you chit chat, kind of like a glorified you know hairdresser giving people dumbbells and saying, "Hey, what do you drive?" Things like that. Funny so, that you would <laughs> use a, a hairdresser. Um, right on. <laughs> <laughs> for your analogy. <laughs> right. Um, so yeah, little by little, uh, people would say, "Well, you can come and detail my car," and I had done maybe two cars before that, you know, back when I was younger, I didn't really know what I was doing. You know, I'd take a roll of paper towels and some Meguiar's wax and things like that. And, you know, I made a hundred bucks here and there. So, so little by little down the road, that became larger and larger for me. 
So hey, so, let me and, let me let's touch yes. back on that training. What what do yes. you see that's um, similar as far as business goes? Because when you're a trainer, it's essentially like having your own small business, also. And even the the yes. carpet cleaning company was another small business. So you kind of really came not from necessarily working for the man, but from from a small business aspect. Now these people who are the trainers, um, ever since the gyms closed, I use Peloton and. And I, yeah. what 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 do you see, or what are people's kind of habits that you have to break when you get people in training? Because I would imagine most of the people that come in there don't take it serious enough, and they don't like put like if you were trying to learn a musical instrument and you don't practice, then you don't really ever get any far ahead. Right. Um, and, and like, and how would you? And, and it'll all tie together because I'm going to tie it into business too. But And then how did you like take those people who were not motivated and actually get them motivated? It's almost a sales job where you're selling them themselves. Yes. I, I believe one of my best attributes is personal um, service, uh, customer service. Um, always being always being on, um, you know, happy face for people to see when they're – name is on that schedule when they have to go to the gym. Um, so they're not going to come in and see some guy who doesn't want to be there. I want to be there for them. And, you know, and, and safety is also a very big uh, part of, of my business as a trainer. Um, you know, I always used to say, I don't want to throw rocks at glass houses. You know, I want to, want to, want to progress and micro progress with each client. So, they could see immediate results from one session to the next because that progression was so small, you know, and mm-hmm. I would uh, inform them, well, last time you couldn't do this and now you can. So, so that was, that was great. That was great. Uh, um, positive reinforcement for them. And, you know, it is, it is, um, it's not always perfect. A lot of people will would cancel and no show and things like that and kind of get a feel for who's going to stick it out with you. And so I, I had clients for 15 years and, you know, some for a month, you know, it just depends on the person. And, uh, so and I had one, one person, only one scenario out of hundreds of clients where they said, I don't think we're a good match. So, so that, <laughs> goes back to my father saying you can't make it as a detailer you know you know so little things like that have uh inspired me to keep going and uh you know prove people wrong so so so, that so was, you've you've come from a place of discipline yourself obviously from from all yeah. of your background and right right yeah i didn't want to stick out college i really didn't i didn't really enjoy it until i got into my master's field so Cause I was then on my own. I couldn't be with, you know, had to be on my own in a, in a different state. So I was in Tennessee then. So it was good. Okay. So then w- w- tell me when you decided, when was the aha moment when you were like, D- it's a detailing business. I'm moving forward with this and I'm all in. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, in 16 is when I, when I opened my LLC and at the time, I was also doing training outside of that gym as well. So there were some people that sought out my my training outside of the gym. And then I decided, well, I bet I better just I'm going to have to start paying taxes for detailing. I'm, getting, <laughs> I'm out there. People know me. So I have business cards. So I better do it. You know, got the whole um, accountant, all that good stuff. So, yeah, 16 and then. Little by little again, 18, I was doing more. I started doing more detailing than training. And then pandemic, March 16th was my last day at the gym. So that was it. They kind of let me go. Let, let me, you know, said, if you're not coming back, then, you know, you just, you just don't have a job anymore. And it was kind of weird, but I, I honestly was very burnt out. I was in the same gym for 18 years, so. So it was good, and you know now now I'm doing my own thing, and um, yeah. So right. so we're taxes. four or five years into a full time detailing business. 
Um, and what have what have you seen as like um, advancements, or what's been like the the most influential thing that's helped change and build your business? Whether that's a product or a method or a or a, a, a computer yeah. software, or who knows? It's not computers, I'll tell you that. <laughs> Never been a strong point of mine. That's why I have an accountant, and uh, I, I'm not good with all that stuff. I'm, I'm that age where uh, you know we didn't get a lot of that. So I took a typing class in high school. So I'm, you know, <laughs> so I'm up there. How, a little how old are you? But um, 45. Okay, I'm 51, so I'm right there with you. <laughs> Computers were brand new. And it, I had a typing class also in high school. And um, this this uh, person that I knew was in the class before me. So she would tell me whatever the thing, the assignment was, because, you know, you'd practice the whole session. And at the end, you'd have to do something and turn it in. So while everybody was practicing, I would do my one that I would turn in at the end. Sounds <laughs> <laughs> like me in high school. Uh, all the All the tricks we learned. Um, so really, again, I, I got to go back to customer service. Um, I, I, um, I've done a lot of, you know, research online and a lot of, you know, dabbling. I've spent way too much money. Um, I know that. Um, but, uh, really what, what made me stick with this, career path starting at, you know, age 40, basically with my, um, second child born and down the road, we have a third one now, um, was the, um, the simplicity of the whole no rinse, um, movement. So the no rinse movement is what really made me stick with it. Um, I've always had a fear of water spots and I've seen what they do and I have, you know, we got this up here and I can't be out in the blazing sun all day. So, um, I, you know, I always, I like to work in the garage. I don't have to be outside and I, I really like, I really like the, um, the modern methods, um, Keeping things simple, keeping things efficient. Efficient is very um, something I, I really strive for. Um, you know, I, I always say I don't want to chase my tail around a car. I want to want to stick with something um, and get that accomplished before moving on. Um, Do you think? I feel, have you have you taken a lot of your things from training and like um, physically proper? that seems to have helped you in detailing because i know if you're if you're ergonomic ergonomic and like um you know not putting unnecessary strain on your body that you're definitely more efficient and you can work longer and um and yeah. feel better at the end of the day that's very that's very true yes and, um so and that's going to lead into you coming on to another podcast when we have a panel where we talk about that specifically because i'm I'm sure you've got a lot to add in there yeah yeah that's great um i have a whole um i guess you could call a library of uh exercises my last um gosh i was doing the last 10 years at uh at the gym i was at i got into some specialized um, kind of rehabilitative exercises for back pain and things like that. So that aren't uh, quite the norm. It's not stretching, but it's uh, kind of like waking your muscles up instead of just lifting weights or running. It's uh, again, uh, the micro progression route of, of fitness and wellness. So yeah, I'd love to jump on and do that in the future. So if you were to if you were to tell somebody who wanted to start their own detailing business fresh from scratch, they'd never been in this before, what one piece of advice would you give them? S start simple and keep it simple. Um, my my dad was always a uh, measure twice, cut once. So again, and then another thing I will tell people when they when the, whether it's uh, training or me working on the cars, um, let's uh, let's start mild before we get wild. So I don't know if that's been around, but 
that that uh, you know people guys want to come in the gym. I want to bulk up and I want to lose my want to lose my gut and I want to play tennis and I want to do this. I'm like, hold on a second. You can't walk down the street without getting out of breath. So we got to start easy, <laughs> you know. So don't so buy that do speedo have, quite yet. <laughs> right? Do I even have a polisher that's valued at over $150? No, I don't even have that yet. Um, so I know I know where my strengths lie. I my strengths right now are currently more. I feel like I'm better at interior work. Um, I have the Vapor Clean Desiderio that I love, um, so I've, I've, I'm a steam guy. Um, but that's I knew I needed to get a push. I needed I needed to progress. So you guys are my oh. are my progression. We're, we're going to the top in that case, man. We have so many things in the works. It's like it's hard not to get giddy and and giggle like a schoolgirl for me on a regular basis and I'm an old man. So I tell you, it, it's super exciting. If you were to look at your business and think, okay, where are you gonna be at five years from now? What's the plan? What's the goal? I, I need a established building with, I, I, I've always been scared of getting employees. Again, my father scared me to death. Um, no, employees suck, thinking, they're the hardest part of having a business. They're, they're, I know yes. I was a horrible employee when I was younger, so I, I'm employees <laughs> are horrible. Yeah, but you got to have you know, the whenever skill. I, yeah, when I ever, whenever I bring it up to him, you know, he ran. You know, he had like 10, 10 vans at once for the carpet cleaning thing. You now he's like, "Do it yourself. You'll be tired. You'll be sore, but do it yourself. You get it all, and your employees are going to steal from you. They'll steal your business." They won't show up. They'll disappoint you. And I'm like, gosh, Dad, thanks. <laughs> so, but I, I'm trying to find the best resources. I have had some some young, good young guys help me, you know, that have shown up, and you know, they're always. I've always known the moms, so they they have that extra pressure, you know, to show up uh, to work. So, but, but yeah, I don't I don't know how long I can be. You know, progressing. Yeah, you know. I, I don't know if you know, so, like about me though. Um, my I, I had a hip replacement surgery about a year and a half ago, and um, the, as you do start to get older, you got to start having a plan of of exit strategy. Whether that's getting employees in there to do the work for you, as hard as it sounds in your head, but proper training, just like you were a trainer. So I know that you got to have good training skills. Yeah. Um, yeah. But at some point when you're, you know, 55, 60 years old, bending over and cleaning that tire, it's not going to be easy. Not at all. It's not going to feel the same. So if yeah. people want to get a hold of you, um, tell tell us your website, your phone number. How do people get a hold of you? Yeah, it's uh, Tony'sFineTouch.com. And the phone number is 859-802. 9636. All right. So if you're anywhere near Edgewood, Kentucky, I would call Tony's Fine Touch Detailing. Get your owner's pride ceramic on there. He's probably got products that he can tell you to take care of your own car. It's um I'm glad that you're on board with us. We're going to the top. Tony Havens. Awesome. Thank you so yes. much for taking some time out of your day to be on the Owner's Pride podcast and behind the buffer. Thank you guys so much.